is up guys we're back for another podcast on everything that you need to know about battlefield 4 um now i've come a little bit prepared a little bit more um ready for this episode i now have a piece of paper if you can hear it that is my entire list of topics that i'm going to be talking about today and i'll be doing that uh throughout this entire podcast uh series or whatever you call it it's just a little thing that i'm thinking about doing that i want to bring to you guys a little bit more professional standpoint and outlook on this stuff i really hope you guys are enjoying this and that you're learning a couple of things um I do plan on going over some tips, not in this episode, but I do plan on giving you guys uh, my own personal knowledge so I can create an entire army of pulp, Pope soldiers in the Battlefield 4 community. Um, okay, I came up with a scheduling on these podcasts. And I really think I'm going to start doing it on a Wednesday and Saturday basis. Uh, This, of course, is a Saturday episode. I know the last one was on a Monday. Uh, Just go ahead and scratch that one from the record books. Not the podcast itself, because I thought it was a pretty good one. But we're going to go ahead and scratch that. No more Mondays. It's going to be Wednesdays and Saturdays. But let's go ahead and kick this thing off. Now, our last uh, when the last time we talked, I went over. Uh, The new DLC coming out and when it was rumored to be coming out. Well, it did not come out last Friday like the original, the first date that I read. So we are on to the second date, which is February the 18th, which is this coming up Tuesday. Um, That is basically the foundational rumor. Uh, that's, That's our last hope for getting a second assault DLC anytime soon as far as we know right now. Uh, But I wanted to go over some of the things that you can kind of look forward to in uh, that DLC. Uh, The new maps, uh, well, they're new. They're they're not new, new, but the old maps that are coming out into uh, the Battlefield 4 scenery, into the guns, everything like that, uh, are some of the old favorites, which are Caspian Border, Operation Metro, Operation Firestorm, and Gulf of Oman. Now, all of these maps have kind of gotten uh, a nice makeover. They are Cinderella status now. Everything looks clean, crisp, and if you have not seen videos of these maps, I do encourage you to please go look these maps up because they are top-notch. They look ten times better than they did in the Frostbite 2 engine, these things are very nice. Uh, just kind of go over a little little bit what's new with these maps. Uh, Caspian Border, of course, has a nice, uh, almost, if you can think of uh, what it would look like if you were in a hayfield filled with a bunch of trees. That's basically what it looks like. It is a very lush autumn grassland uh, with uh, just trees everywhere. It's a forest. Um, The original Candy Cane Tower, as we call it, has been dropped uh, as of right now. I have not seen it standing anywhere. Uh, All these maps are supposedly taking taking place in a time frame which is like years, years, and years after uh, the war has ended in Battlefield 3. And uh, this is this is kind of what we're left with in these maps. Um, there is, however, a large... It's almost like a chimney, basically. But there is a large chimney in this map, uh, which the levolution factor of it is... You, there's a countdown, you press a button, and there's a countdown, and then things uh, just kind of get to blowing up and falling down so that's what you can look forward to not on my top favorite in this second assault map like the the map packs Uh, Operation Metro which is up there for me is probably my number two um but this it, it, it looks like DICE sat back and said well you know what Battlefield 3 Metro let's see what we have here we have basically mm 
one, two, three entrances in either side that you come through. If you can hold A, B, or C and B, you basically have the entire map locked down. Everybody kind of conjoins to that one location and if you've played Battlefield 3 then you understand exactly where that one location is um, but they they wanted to do something different they wanted to upgrade the map into a standpoint where oh let's say uh, uh, just more doors more corridors uh, more entrances uh, more levolution if you will it's it's they have it, Little Baby Metro has grown up in this standpoint. Uh, it's it's the underground parts where the the trains are. That is all flooded over. Um, you're basically running through water the entire time. Uh, you've got entrances into things that didn't normally have entrances. Uh, as far as I know, I'm pretty sure the old school ceiling glitch is now just. It's, it, it, I, hopefully that's going to be taken care of because I like I like my battlefield to not have ways that people can uh, cheat the system. I am not a glitch player. I, I don't I don't do the glitches. If you are that glitch player, far be it for me to tell you that you are a stupid stupid person and I hope everything horrible for you in your battlefield career but I'm not I'm not you know I'm not I don't I'm not gonna hate you but I do wish everything bad upon you as far as your battlefield 4 community goes um the other one would be firestorm which is probably my least favorite um just on the small videos that I have seen on Firestorm, it uh, it doesn't look the same as it did in Battlefield Three. Like you still got the, you know point one, point two, point three, those little you know blotches of what is a couple of structures, uh, like in the original. Uh, but for the most part, Firestorm is a shell of what it was. Uh, you've got just crazy amounts of uh, smoke, or well, it, the oil basically catches on fire, and black smoke goes everywhere, and it, it just it's it it looks like it sucks. I I it could be it could end up turning out to be my favorite map, but as of right now, Saturday, February fifteenth, this is not at all anywhere close to being a top three map for me um out of four which is saying something i know okay i know now my favorite however is gulf gulf of oman it is still structurally sound in the same format that it was in battlefield 3 you still got you know these places here and here and here and that big massive thing in the background um but they've really tried to keep what was uh, that Battlefield 2 map. Where you've got all these things that just make this absolutely epic map. Which is why it is a fan favorite and why it's been a fan favorite since Battlefield 2. What they have added is the Levolution Factor in it. To where there is now a just an epic sandstorm that blows in and it if you have not seen again if you haven't seen this stuff you need to look up videos on these maps especially Gulf of Oman just that sandstorm is what makes it the just my favorite map in this pack you are basically limited to I'd say 30, 30 feet I'd give it 30 feet in front of you visibility. There is no way you can see helicopters, helicopters and planes, or helicopters and jets are all, that. there's no more visual. You can't see anything on the ground. You can't even see how far from the ground you are, as far as I know. Just that whole standpoint is what makes it for me. 
again, this is this whole microphone right here is it contains my opinions. I know you guys have your own opinions, and I would love to hear what you think of which one of these is your favorite, why you like this. Just leave those in the comments. I would love to read what you think about these maps. But as far as I think, Gulf of Oman is my favorite, followed by Metro, Caspian Border, and then as of right now, Firestorm. Again, Firestorm could be my favorite. It could turn out to be the best one of all of them. But as of right now, it is my number four and last on my list. Now, with that said, if I had to pick my second assault map pack, the four maps of all the battlefields that I had to pick or choose from that could make up this second assault, it would go Metro, which is again in the second assault, Gulf of Oman, which they have done amazing work on this map, and that's why. And then I would probably go Karg Island. Now, I would pick Karg Island over Caspian Border because it still has that whole naval warfare factor about it. And I love that. That is that that's it that's awesome for me. I cannot tell you how many times I have just the rush standpoint of it. You go from your boat and you have to fight your way in the water just to get to land. And once you hit land, you've got to fight your way through all the way to the end. And that is awesome to me. There is nothing better to me than having to fight my way through everything. So Karg Island is a fan favorite for me. Now the last one, I was a little bit disappointed because it wasn't. This map has gone from Battlefield 1942, the original Battlefield game, all the way through the ages, all the way into Battlefield 3, but it did not make the cut for Second Assault, and that is Wake Island. Wake Island has been my favorite map of all time. If there is one map that I had to play forever in any Battlefield game, it would be Wake Island because of what it does. You have a horseshoe island. If you are spawning on the island, you have all of this that you can play with. I can't tell you how many times in Battlefield 2 I would spawn and then instantly rush to the end of one of those things just to get in a cannon structure just to get on a machine gun that was in a pillbox. This map has so much history with me. Not to mention how awesome it was to spawn on boats and you'd have landing crafts that you could just drive into the map. Go right up the middle. Fight your way past pillboxes, artillery shots, everything this map was clean for me. You both sides had a runway, and one side had a aircraft carrier. It was just an epic map. I really wish Wake Island had made the cut. Now, with also a part of um, the second assault, uh, you have the new Capture the Flag objectives coming in. Uh, if you never got to play Capture the Flag um, on any of the DLC from Battlefield 3, uh, it's, you know, your standard Capture the Flag. Both teams have a flag. you got to go over there and get it. If they've already got yours, you got to get it back before you can return it. Uh, don't let them take your flag. And, you know, so on and so on, yada, yada, yada. But I do want to talk about some of the new weapons that are going to be coming out. Well, I say new. They're old, but just just stay with me. Um, there is an achievement of Firestarter. You have to reach rank 10, have second assault. I've got all those except for the second assault. Excuse me. Your award requirements are start five fires and second assault. Now, what this means, I'm not sure. I'm sure we'll figure it out. 
Now, you have to have five of these. Now, this whole achievement only gives you uh, some camos. I can't, I don't know if it's actual camos or if it's the paint for your gun. We'll figure it out when that comes along. Uh, your second one is Dead Stop, Reach Rank 10, Second Assault, yada, yada, yada. But your shotgun ribbon, you have to have one and raise or lower the Caspian Border Gate. You get the Day Out 12. Now, the Day Out 12 is a shotgun, originally from uh, Battlefield 3. Uh, it's awesome. It's one of my favorite shotguns. Love this thing. Next, you have Express Train, Reach Level 10. Second assault. We'll just go ahead and say that that's part of everything. Um, you have to have one assault rifle ribbon. Kill. You have to have a kill assist ribbon. Two of them. And get ten kills inside the metro. And you get the F2000. The F2000 is not one of my favorite guns, but I am sure you're screaming at your radio, computer, TV, whatever you're on listening to this, going, Pope, that's my favorite gun. Well have at it that's that's you uh, next is the co-pilot achievement spend 10 minutes in a helicopter and do 12 squad repairs and you get the AS Val um, and basically it's a machine gun sniper rifle which I noticed it's in the PDW category it's either PDW or the carbines I can't remember but I, I want to say it's the PDW which is stupid don't don't put that in there uh, next is the dust devil award or anti-vehicle anti ribbon you have to have one of those and destroy five vehicles in Gulf of Oman and you get the M60 uh, light machine gun. I don't even know why we say light machine. That is a heavy machine gun. That is the gun of Rambo. Uh, and then last is Eagle's Nest, which is sniper rifle ribbon times one. In a round, kill five players from Caspian border, from the Caspian or Firestorm towers. So there are towers that you can get back in on Firestorm and on Caspian border. Um, now there are a couple more of these achievements in second assault but most of them give you either dog tags or another camo uh, the gold one is it's not worth it but uh, those are the achievements and the guns that we now have in second assault um, so that's what you have to look forward to um, next on my list I wanted to talk about my top five guns that I use in Battlefield 4 and a brief description of why. Um, now these are, of course, once again, I don't even know why I had to continue to tell you guys this, but these are my opinions on my guns. This is why I pick these five guns. So, just kind of bear with me while I uh, go through this kind of stuff. Uh, first off, number five is the M39 EMR, which is uh, it's a DMR class gun. If I can, let me see. I would bring this up so I can give you guys a 100% description. Um, now this thing, it looks like the Mini 14. Uh, if you've never seen that, look that up. But the the M39 is from Battlefield 3. They just put it back in here. This thing has a damage rate of 60, which is probably one of the better ones on the DMRs. Uh, the accuracy is 75 and the stability is 35 which is kind of low but it's actually pretty good for a DMR because those things fly all over the place. Um, they have an attachments where you can jump up the stability. Uh, I go silent which drops down the accuracy but I also throw on a heavy barrel if I'm going long range uh, shooting on maps. Uh, things like that. My personal settings is the hollow sight with a green laser and an angle grip and suppressor. And again, I throw on uh, an ACOG sight or and the heavy barrel if I'm going for the long distance stuff. Uh, number four, I have the A91, which is a surprising carbine. Um, it's really, it's a pretty awesome gun. I was surprised whenever I picked it up and started shooting, shooting it just how much I enjoyed firing this gun. It has great accuracy and stability. Um, with with pretty good damage for a carbine. Um, my own personal setup is a Cobra Red Dot with a times 2 magnifier. I put a suppressor on it, and of course, again, I put on an angled grip. It just helps with stability 
and that's why I use that for most of my guns. Uh, at number three, I have the MP7. Now, the MP7 has a 950 round uh, rate of fire. It has amazing stability for a little PDW that shoots that fast in accuracy. Um, which, if you if you fired it from Battlefield 3, um, you understand exactly why this gun is amazing. Um, just, it, it spits bullets. Uh, my personal setup, again, is the Cobra, red dot with a times 2 magnifier, and a suppressor, and an angled grip. With number 2 spot has the CZ-3A1. Now, this gun, uh, Level Cap did a... A video on it um, that's what really kind of threw me up to it uh, this gun is unreal uh, it's not a strong gun but it does make up for everything with the ti uh, with a thousand rate of fire uh, stability and accuracy can be gr raised with the attachments um, such as uh, the angled grip and uh, I mean you can throw all kinds of different just play with play with these attachments with your guns they have the little things on there where you can notice just how much you're actually doing to the gun um, play with those things guys make sure you find the best setup for your gun you don't want to go out into war not knowing what you're doing um, personal setup again is the Cobra red dot with the green laser um, the suppressor and an angled grip and the number one gun on my top five list in Battlefield 4 right now is the AUG. Now this is my favorite gun in Battlefield 3 and it has carried over into Battlefield 4 with the same uh, attributes to it. Um, the stability compared to the rate of fire is perfect for me. Um, it has the attachments that you could throw on it that make it almost a laser. It does not move much um, if you fire it enough, you can almost count your bullets to where it would kill somebody. I, I can, I had, I had literally in in Battlefield Three, not so much in Battlefield Four, but in Battlefield Three, I had gotten to where I could press it, press the trigger just long enough to where when I let off, it was going to kill them, and I still had bullets in. I knew, I, I knew that gun front and back. And this has only carried over into Battlefield 4. Um, the range is a little underrated in in the setup of the gun. Uh, it actually has pretty good range if you fire it in bursts. And I don't see that enough. Tip of the day, fire in bursts. It is much more accurate even with the crappy guns. Um, the damage is good. And again, it's just... It, it, it was it's it's an overall great gun for me my personal setup is an HD 33 sight which is a new sight for Battlefield 4 it's almost like a hollow but it gives you a little bit of a wider um, visual on the sight with the times 2 magnifier a suppressor and an angled grip the angled grip just helps me so much with stability um, now I, I want to do these segments towards the end of these episodes, which is my soapbox episode or segment, which is when I just kind of stand up and say, you know, this is this is what I have a problem with in Battlefield 4. Right now, uh, there's still too much for me to jump up and say, oh, I hate this and I hate that. So I'm just going to go on with this. Uh, Dice, give us some uh, night maps some nighttime stuff to do. Um, you have entirely too many infrareds, you have entirely too many night vision sights to not have something darker. Give us a reason to use these amazing pieces of technology that you have given us such as these night visions and red um, infrared sights. We need to have a reason to use this stuff I am not going to go trucking out into the daytime and use a night vision sight. That is stupid. That's dumb. And I'm not going to be an hor a horrible uh, Battlefield 4 player. So please, DICE, deliver this to us. Nighttime maps. Just You can make an old map. Just turn it into nighttime. Give us this, DICE. We epically need it. Alright guys, well that is going to do it for me in this episode. 
Uh, don't forget comments down below. Let me know what your top four second assault maps should have been. If you feel comfortable with uh, the maps that we have now, let me know again. Don't forget all the links down below, such as my Twitter. Uh, hit me up on that, guys. I would love to hear from you. But that is going to do it. My name is the Pope 890 and this has been a podcast of Battlefield 4. Peace out.